Remember, it was in the month of December that the United Kingdom detected these mutant strains, which were far more transmissible. Uh, in Kent, in the United Kingdom, ultimately tests were done, which indicated uh, that 70 percent higher transmissibility occurred. And that UK mutant strain actually went around the world. Uh, it's known to have resulted in a great deal of, of infections, including, for example, in the state of Punjab, where more genome sequencing has taken place. Uh, then there is the South Africa variant and the Brazil variant, and both of these are thought to be perhaps even more dangerous. Um, and of course, there is that novel strain which has been found in India as well with two mutations over there. But we don't really know very much about that or whether the present numbers are linked to that. One of the finest experts in the world to tell us about the evolution of this crisis of mutants is Professor Devi Sridhar, the University of uh, Edinburgh. She joins us now. Thanks very much, uh, Professor Sridhar, for being with us. How long did it take the United Kingdom to fight off the UK mutant strain? Yeah, so this new strain called B117 emerged in September, and then by December in England, it was really taking off. And so England um, was late, but it went into a lockdown in December. By that point, hospitals were full in London, full in the south of England. And then here in Scotland, we could see that. So even before our cases rising and before having B117, we went into a lockdown um, to try to keep the numbers low. Um, and actually, it is more transmissible, about 55% more transmissible. It is harder to suppress, but it is possible to suppress it. So through actually quite strict stay-at-home messages, asking people not to mix indoors, uh, having shops close, having bars, hospitality, restaurants close, the numbers now are quite low. But now the worry is as we open up again, are we going to see it transmitting more? Professor Sridhar, are lockdowns the only way to fight a highly transmissible strain like the UK one? It's a really hard one because I think there are countries that early on managed to avoid long lockdowns by having a very good test trace isolate system. Mm -hmm. We still haven't managed in many Western countries to replicate the East Asian success with this, which seems down to having very rapid testing, very robust tracing of any contacts but also having people isolate and monitoring that. That's where it's broken down here, because while people are happy to get tested, if you ask them to isolate and there's not very good payments, if you take time off work, mm -hmm. people will choose not to isolate or not to get tested. And so this has been the main problem here. Without a functioning test trace isolate system to find cases, you're forced to treating everyone like they're infectious. So you're forced into a lockdown. But I think now the hope is with vaccines, as well as now they're bringing in mass testing as well, asymptomatic testing, um, as well as improving the benefits if you isolate, that hopefully we can find a way through this without having to be back in a lockdown this summer. Professor Sridhar, how effective are existing vaccines on the UK strain? So fortunately, the vaccines we have, Pfizer, uh, Moderna, um, AstraZeneca, um, as well as I think as well, Novavax seem to be very effective against B117 or the Kent Engl English variant. Um, so we haven't seen a problem with what we call immune evasion, you know, a virus evading our immune responses. The ones we are worried about are the South African variant, B1571, as well as the Brazil variant, P1, because these seem to be able to reinfect people who have already had what we call the wild type or original virus. So this is what we have to guard against. And it seems like the vaccine manufacturers can redo their vaccines to create boosters against these through slight tweaks. But then it becomes a cat and mouse game between how mm -hmm. fast the virus can move and transmit in a new form and how fast we can change our vaccines to stay ahead of it. So do vaccines need to be revised for greater efficacy against the South Africa and Brazil strain, the other two which you know, are causing a lot of problems? I think we're, it's inevitable right now uh, until we get a longer lasting protection. I know AstraZeneca is looking at, you know, redoing it slightly for later 2021. Mm -hmm. The question now, though, that virologists are asking is, has this virus run out of ways that it can mutate? So are we seeing all its tricks now so we can get ahead of it? Or will there be more mutations to come in the future, which make it harder and harder to catch? But I'm actually really excited by the vaccine technology. We're seeing now mRNA vaccines being used against things like um, cancer, against HIV, 
against malaria with really promising trials, as well as even this January, it was lost in the COVID news, but a universal flu vaccine, which actually could be used against numerous strains, which has always been a challenge for flu, getting the right strain. So I'm quite optimistic that science will provide really good solutions. And in 50 years, because COVID has accelerated the scientific progress, many of the things that we used to see as unachievable, such as an mm -hmm. HIV vaccine or a malaria vaccine, might actually be possible. Yeah. Has the pace at which the COVID virus mutated surprised you? Well, I think it has surprises, but it's not, if we think about it, it actually shouldn't be surprising because the virus replicates inside each new person's body or animal's body as it transmits into animals and it changes. And every time it replicates, it can make slight errors and these are mutations. Mm -hmm. And some of those mutations burn out. They have no selective advantage, um, but some have a selective advantage. So a selective advantage would be one that is more transmissible, that's easier, let's say has a longer stage where you're asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic, or if you have a higher viral load, um, or it has an advantage in terms of being able to reinfect people, which means that strain can jump where the one that couldn't is obviously not. So what you're seeing is natural selection, right? The virus wants to survive, um, and those strains that are more selectively chosen for will spread. So in a way, we are just seeing evolution, and evolution, unfortunately, in this case, is not on our side. Is the UK variant more deadly than the original strain of the virus? We know it's more transmissible, but there's also there are now studies also which say that, in fact, it is more potentially deadly. I mean, is that a view you share? And what's the best way to combat it? Um, I think right now the lesson from Brazil is that just hoping that this virus will go away if you do nothing and just let it be is a recipe for disaster. We've seen out of Brazil um, hospitals collapsing, uh, you know, relatives unable to get oxygen for those they love, people dying because they cannot get medical care. And while this is a virus that we can keep the mortality rate really low, even under 1%, people get very good medical care. If hospitals collapse, that mortality rate jumps up because people will die who otherwise would have survived had they gotten fluids or oxygen or a bed in a hospital. And so that's the worry with this kind of virus. Also, because um, we are seeing this issue of reinfections, which means just because you have one wave, it doesn't mean it's over. You might have another wave coming through again when the virus slightly changes. So the lesson for the world is we need to suppress everywhere. We haven't seen mutations coming out of countries that have suppressed. We don't have a New Zealand variant or a Taiwan variant. Um, we have variants emerging where we've had a lot of spread. Yeah. And also that we need to vaccinate everywhere quickly right. because that is going to be ultimately our way out of this. The combination of mass vaccination as well as testing and trying to get that to all parts of the world. Because as long as the virus is circulating somewhere in the world, it can change. Mm -hmm. And if it changes in a way that it affects our vaccines or our immune response, then we're going to be forced to actually then have to tweak our response to it as well. So we just right now need to see a huge effort to produce vaccines where India is leading in this regard and then getting them out to all parts of the world as quickly as possible. All right, Professor Sridhar, great speaking to you as usual. Uh, so much information over there. India faces a real crisis, possibly with a variant of the original strain, and we really do need to vaccinate as fast as we can. Thank you very much for being with us.